Hey everybody, how are y'all doing today? So, um, I wanted to do a quick video talking about, um, for anybody looking to get into 3D printing now, or if you're looking to expand your uh, 3D printing repertoire with different machines and stuff, hi, um, I, your, your, this year, stands to be an extremely good year for 3D printing. And that is because all the new machines and the new brands that are coming out with multi-material systems, and I mean multi-material systems like the Bamboo Lab AMS Gen 1, the Bamboo Lab AMS Lite, basically Gen 2, um, you have Creality is coming out with their own multi-material system, and um, Anycubic is coming out with their Cobra 3, which will have a their multi-material system, which is actually pretty interesting because their multi-material, basically their AMS, is also going to be a dryer as well. So it's going to have heated... Uh, it's going to be a heated AMS box so it can actually dry while you're printing. So instead of doing the whole, you know, have your your dryer hooked to your printer and feeding one roll of filament, you can have a big four roll thing and uh, stuff like that. But the other thing that is an advantage of having a multi-material system is one, of course, the multicolored prints. So you do stuff like this, you know, and, and have all those really cool colors and everything like that. But the other advantage is not, now I'm not, I didn't think of this. I'm not taking credit for it or anything like that. A lot of content creators have done it, but uh, I just wanted to do my own video on it right quick. The other advantage of having a multi-material system is just that, multi-material. So every 3D printer, pretty much, hobbyist, um, it's almost like a rite of passage. At some point, somebody's going to do a helmet, you know, and they, and they want to do a helmet and stuff like that, you know, helmet, pile of helmets I haven't finished yet. Uh, but anyway, they're going to want to do a helmet, okay? And why do you keep turning? Are you looking at something over there? Is there a target? A bounty that you're looking at just stay there um, but the thing about it is with um, when you're doing helmets and stuff like that you're going to have to use supports okay and you can get stuff like this that has to be post-processed afterwards you gotta you know use some um, you know, either resin or um, you can use, uh, there's liquid text, which is like a liquid um, modeling paste that you can use. It's really easy. A lot of people use uh, 3D printing resin for like resin printers and you paint it on and then cure it and sand it down. That's a really quick way. They use Bondo, they use all kinds of stuff. Um, but with a multi-material system, um, some of you probably already know this, but it might be new to some of you. You can use two different materials in the same print to support one another. And that's exactly what I mean. So like if you wanted to print, say like a helmet like this, which is PLA, okay, you could use a material called PETG for the supports. Now the reason you would do that is because PLA and PETG do not adhere to one another. Not really. Um, the, the, the layer adhesion between PLA and PETG is extremely, extremely weak. So what does that mean? Well, that means that when you go to support your model, everybody wants to get as perfect a model as possible and they want to do as least amount of post-processing after the model is done. So like this helmet is done but it still needs a lot of work it needs sanding it needs stuff like that to get it ready to paint but if I had printed this instead of on the Neptune 4 if I had a printer big enough to print this in one piece that had an AMS unit what I could do is I could print the helmet in PLA and then print the supports in PETG 
because the two materials don't bond to one another, what that allows me to do is when you're doing your supports, there, there's going to be a little bit of a gap between the top of the support and the bottom of your model. Typically it's about 0 0.20 millimeters because you can't do it at a, the closer you get to the model, well if you're printing in the same material, the supports and the model, then they're, they're going to just print it one giant chunk because it's going to just adhere to one another. Uh, so you have to leave a little bit of a gap and that little bit of gap can cause stuff like this, okay, it can cause scarring on the model. The good thing with using PETG to support PLA is that you can take that interface layer between the two materials and you can take it down to zero. Now what that does for you, one, is it provides a very stable and flat surface to start printing your model on, okay? and you won't get the layer adhesion between, not really, you won't really get a lot of layer adhesion between the two materials, and so you can get much cleaner surfaces where your support interfaces with your model. And then as far as support removal goes, it's very, very easy because the materials don't adhere to one another. So it's, it, when you do the two different materials, it allows you to essentially like bring your print bed up to provide a printing surface to start your model. So like in this, when it was sitting on the print printer, not exactly right, but the little gaps underneath there, using PETG to come up and build a nice solid surface to start the print of the helmet on, would have made that bottom area and even areas in the eyes and stuff like that would have made it a lot cleaner and there would be less post-processing. And you can do it vice versa too. You can print, if you wanted to print a, a PETG helmet, you can use PLA to support it. And there's also um, support materials out there that you can use, uh, I think it's PBA, PVB, something, I, I, I don't remember right off the top of my head, but it, sorry. It's uh, water soluble. And the benefit to the water soluble is the fact that once you get your print off, you can literally just dunk the thing in water and the supports will dissolve away. Um, so that is one advantage to having a multi-material system, not just to do multicolor, but to make your prints in multiple materials. So have one material as the model and have another material as the support. Um, it, it's a, it's a, I'm gonna do a video on it, like I'm gonna show an example. I'm gonna print something that has like a, basically a 90 degree overhang. And then I'm going to set my uh, interface distance to zero between the two materials and I'm gonna keep the rectilinear uh, top surface on the support and then start the model printing from there. And I'll show you how easy they remove. Um, there's another content creator on YouTube called ModBot and he did a uh, video showing the process of using one material to support another and it worked really well. And so that's something else that you can look forward to to having a um, multi-material system, you get multicolor, but then you can also use multiple materials to print your models. You get better interface, you get better bottom layers of the model, less post-processing and stuff like that. So anyway, just wanted to bring that up and uh, let y'all know about it just in case y'all didn't. And uh, just give you another little advantage of getting the multi-material system. So, it's a great year for it. You're gonna have so many options. You know, you're gonna have Bamboo Labs, you're gonna have Creality, you're gonna have AnyCubic. I'm sure Elegoo's got a multi-material system coming as well. It's become like a new standard. Uh, Prusa already has a multi-material system, but that thing is like, it, it's German all the way. The engineering in that thing is is overly complex and, and all that, and, and I don't even have a Prusa printer because I can't afford them and they won't send me one. So anyway, but just want to let y'all know about that. So thank y'all.